morning, YouTube. I hope you had a wonderful week with your students. I hope you had a wonderful teacher appreciation week. I know it was kind of a whirlwind of a week for me, but it's Friday and I'm excited for the weekend. It's been beautiful weather in New Jersey and I hope you're experiencing the same wherever you are. This week, I wanna talk about something that new teachers and even more expert teachers struggle with. Let's talk about pacing. Pacing is so tough because we have such a wide range of abilities and levels in our classes and we don't wanna go too fast because then we're gonna be leaving students behind and then if we go too slow, then students are gonna be bored. So there's definitely a sweet spot. Now, if you're anything like me and you teach maybe like AP chemistry or you have to have your students take a final exam at the end of the school year, you definitely have to get to the finish line so that your students are able to do the best they can on those examinations. So how do you make sure that you meet your pacing? How do you make sure that you're able to move through the content with ease, plan you know, appropriate lessons so that you can make sure that your students are learning the information as efficiently and effectively as possible? Well, there are some strategies that I think can really help. So I'm gonna offer some really simple ones and then we're gonna kind of build in difficulty and effort needed by the teacher. So let's start with number one. So number one is actually really simple. It's the use of a timer right? Literally a timer. So what I do is I, I don't do this every day, but I use a timer. I put a timer on my Google Slides presentation. So when my students come in, there's like some sort of like do now or bell work that they're working on. They grab it. They start working on it right away. As soon as the bell rings, I hit the play button. And so YouTube has all these wonderful little timers that you can search up. So all you have to do is just, you know, go into a Google Slides presentation or just go to YouTube and you can type in, for example, five minute timer, 10 minute timer, and then import it right onto your Google Slides presentation. And so my students have a better idea about how much time they're given to complete the task. It also allows me to be a little bit more mindful about how much time I'm spending on a particular task. So for example, I will use this whenever I know that there's something that I need to get through. So just yesterday, I did a throwback Thursday. We were talking about electrochemistry and I gave my students 10 minutes. I gave them 10 minutes to review that content. And then we moved on to the next thing because we had to get through rate loss. And so I wanted to make sure that my students had enough time to finish the team activity or the poll that we were working on. And so that made sure that I was able to complete that in the time that was allotted. The second thing that you can be a little bit more mindful with is how you're grouping your students. So every marking period, I change learning teams or groups. And that has allowed me to see how different groups work together, kind of mix it up if students aren't necessarily enjoying working with each other. But here's the thing, you have to group them homogeneously. Homogeneous grouping is a complete game changer in my classroom. It has made sure that I can meet all students' needs. It makes it a lot easier for me to identify those struggling students so that when they're working on a team activity, I can make sure that I'm spending my time with those students to help get them through what they need to get through. And then for my higher performing students, I always make sure that I have something readily available after maybe like they finish early. So being able to identify those students that are struggling and then the more you know higher performing students, this can make sure that all students are you know, on task and they're engaged and you're able to move through the content more smoothly. I also think that homogenous grouping can change your classroom environment. It makes students a little bit more comfortable with sharing their ideas. You know, if you have heterogeneous grouping where you've got all different levels mixed together, Ultimately, what ends up happening is you have one person teaching the group and, you know, they may or may not like that. And so I think by kind of distributing it out a little bit more makes it a lot easier and makes it a little bit more fair for everybody. A third strategy that I cannot recommend enough is the use of formative assessments. How are you as the teacher going to know what your students don't know? And that's where the formative assessment comes in. So remember, a formative assessment does not numerically impact a student's marking period grade. It's entirely low stakes. But the idea is that you're giving your students a chance to demonstrate what they've learned. And then if they need more remedial help, then you can make the best instructional decisions possible to meet your students where they are. So for me, when I do a formative assessment, I'm looking at the data and I'm looking at them saying, okay, like pretty much 80% of my students have mastered this content. So that means I feel pretty comfortable about moving on. 
And at that point, for the students that are still not meeting the criteria or still not understanding the content, I can pull them aside and talk about their formative assessment results. I can suggest that they come for extra help or maybe during do now time, I can pull them aside and work with them in like a small kind of group setting. Now here we move into some stuff that requires definitely a little bit more prep on the teacher's part. So I have talked about this on my channel for years at this point. I have a flipped classroom. I have a flipped classroom in my AP class, my CP class, my honors class, and it has completely changed the way I instruct my students during class time. The idea with the flipped classroom is not that it's a, the video content is supposed to replace the teacher. Really the goal of the flipped classroom is for you to provide some work that your students can complete pretty much independently at home, maybe jotting down notes for example, and then when they come into class the next day, then you can spend more quality time discussing the content content, working through problems, doing task cards, team activities. I mean, there's so many things that you can do, but I think the flip classroom has really saved me in terms of making sure that my students have what they need because they can go back and they can watch all of these videos. So for example, when they're preparing for the final exam and they're like, gosh, I really struggled on that unit in thermochemistry, they can go back to those videos and watch them again. And then the final strategy that, again, is definitely a little bit more labor intensive on the part of the teacher is the incorporation of menus. I believe in the ability for students to make choices over their learning. I want to empower my students because that's what it's going to be like for them in higher education. So a menu is a great way to empower your students to make choices and own the learning. And so in my class, I offer a ton of different choices on any given menu. And these menus, you know, they could be um, maybe video choices, they could be uh, worksheet choices, they could be like a little Google form. So there's so many different things that I use to help my students know whether or not they've mastered the content. And by setting the deadlines on the menus, this makes sure that your students meet the criteria and then they all come together for their formative assessment. So the idea is that if my students aren't working through the content in class, then whatever they don't finish, they're gonna have to do at home. But setting the finite deadline, make sure that your students are well aware of what's required of them and then they can come to you if they need help they can work with you one-on-one -on -one because a lot of times when i'm doing menus in my class my students are working independently i'm literally walking up and down the aisles making sure that my students feel comfortable and if i can help them in any way if you're interested in what a unit menu is um, i'm happy to share some resources with you i'll post some links down below but i just want to kind of stop here and say I am just so happy that you are here and I thank you so much for watching this channel. Um, this week was Teacher Appreciation Week and I just, I value you guys so much for spending your personal time watching my videos to become a better teacher. Your students are so incredibly lucky to have you. Please don't forget that. I am so incredibly lucky to have you as part of my audience. I just, sorry, not, I don't want to get all sappy, but it's true. I just feel so grateful that you're here. And if there's anything that you want me to post a video about or have questions about, please don't hesitate to ever reach out to me. It is my pleasure to help you and assist you on your journey through teaching. So please don't hesitate to leave a comment down below. You can always send me an email, mrschemclass at gmail.com. I want to wish you a wonderful rest of your weekends. Happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there. I will definitely see you guys next week.